video of those activities that we weren't able to see real time. That activity set the stage for Expedition 64 crew members, uh, NASA astronaut Kate Rubens and Roscosmos cosmonaut Sergei Rizhikov and Sergei Kuzvirchkov to stay behind today as their Expedition 63 crewmates return to Earth. The next step on the journey will, of course, be undocking. Again, that's coming up at 6.32 p.m. Central Time, just about uh, 14 minutes away now. Once the appointed time arrive, Soyuz Commander Anatoly Imanishin will send a command to open the hooks and latches between the Soyuz and the Poisk Mini Research Module 2, where it's been docked at the space station since April. Once the two vehicles are disconnected, the Soyuz thrusters will automatically fire and back the spacecraft away from the Poisk at a speed of just over a quarter mile per hour. Within three minutes of undocking, the space, uh, the Soyuz will be about 50 feet away from the space station, at which, which point uh, Ivanishin will be able to conduct the first separation burn, firing the Soyuz jets for about eight seconds to begin moving away from the space station at a rate of about 1.2 miles per hour. You can see a graphic here of how that will, will look. When it's almost 200 feet away and about four and a half minutes after undocking, the engines fire again for 15 seconds, speeding the spacecraft up to three and a half miles per hour. That should get it to a point about 20 miles away in time for the scheduled nine o'clock deorbit burn. As you can see, after that deorbit burn, the uh, descent module of the spacecraft will be separated from the rest of the spacecraft uh, for the final portion of the landing. Parachutes and then uh, soft landing jets will slow it down for its landing in Kazakhstan at 9.55 p.m. Central. Since the hatches between the Soyuz and the Poisk Mini Research Module were closed at 3.24 p.m., the crew inside the Soyuz has been steadily making their way through their checklist in preparation for their landing tonight. Soon after that hatch closure was confirmed, they took their Soyuz off of the space station's power and put it on autonomous power, then started entering the settings needed for deorbit, such as their state vectors and the change in speed for their deorbit burn. They also depressurized the vestibule between the Soyuz and the Poisk module and performed a series of leak checks. And then they got themselves ready by getting into the so-called spacesuits that they'll be wearing during the journey home. With that done, they're ready to, in to move into the decent module of the Soyuz, which uh, contains the custom seats that they use during launch and landing to soften their touchdown. It also has all the controls and displays necessary for flight, as well as the life support systems batteries for re-entry and landing. And of course, it also has the parachutes and soft landing rockets that will slow the Soyuz just before it's touchdown. It's the only portion that will stay with the crew all the way back to Earth. The orbital module, which is what is directly connected to the station's Poisk module, will separate from the descent module about 28 minutes after the deorbit burn, when the Soyuz is about 87 miles above the Earth. We're about 10 minutes away from today's scheduled 6.32 p.m. Central Time undocking.
This is the view uh, coming from the Soyuz, looking out at the space station, and it's what the uh, crew was seeing as they move away from the space station. Again, that undocking is scheduled to start uh, in about nine minutes now at 6.32 p.m. Central. And that will set the crew on the, their way for uh, undocking uh, for a deorbit burn at 9 p.m. and, and landing at 9.55 p.m. Moscow at 2.2400, we activated the closed transmitter, copy. The main transmitter. And activating display plus TV. And I'm ready to issue the E2 command. We confirm at 02-2500. We confirm the command. Zero two twenty five zero zero command has been sent. We have pressurization accelerometer. Printer. We copy. We have indicate the mode. Printer. Copy. We don't have a GSO yet. Not in attitude yet. The KDO parameters. I promised earlier that we would try and answer some of your questions over the course of the night, and we've had a few people sending those in using the hashtag AskNASA. You can keep doing so on social media if you have a question about the Expedition 63 and docking and landing, um, but we'll go, go ahead and take a few of the ones that have already come in now. Uh, the first one is coming from Caitlin, who's asking what happens between hatch closure and undocking. Um, there are a number of things that the crew needs to do once they get the hatches between the two vehicles closed. Um, one of the one of the main things is they need to get into their spacesuits, the um, so-called launch and entry suits that the crew wears uh, both when they launch into space and for their return home. It would protect them in a case of an emergency um, and and is one of the um, one of the key things that they have to do before they before they get into their seats to come home. Also, conduct a number of leak checks between the two vehicles to so make sure that both of them are going to be safe once they uh, separate from each other. And then um, begin entering some of the some of the information that they'll need for for today's deorbit, leading to that 9:55 p.m. landing. And zero. Is the next, command. Uh, next up, we have Jake, who is asking how many G-forces would the crew feel on re-entry? Uh, that is about five Gs for Soyuz landing. It can vary a little bit, but um, in general, crew members seem to say that the, that the harder part is the actual touchdown. That has been compared to a soft car crash. Uh, even when the when the parachutes and soft landing jets slowing the Soyuz down, it it can be a bit of a a bit of a wild ride once they do land on the steps of Kazakhstan. Jonathan Haley is asking with Expedition 63 returning to Earth, who is going to be staying behind on the space station? That is the Expedition 64 crew. They are going to be alone there for a, for a couple of weeks at least. Um, 
That is NASA astronaut Kate Rubens, as well as Roscosmos cosmonauts Sergei Ryzhenkov and Sergei Kuzverchkov. They'll have the space station to themselves for just a little while until the SpaceX Crew-1 arrives. Uh, that is going to be the four astronauts coming up on board the first operational SpaceX Crew Dragon mission. They are scheduled to launch in uh, in November, and they will be that will be bringing up uh, Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, and Soichi Noguchi. Kat is asking, is there anything specific or exciting that the Soyuz is bringing back to Earth from space station? And uh, the main thing that the Soyuz brings back to Earth is the astronauts themselves. There's not just a whole lot of room. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the two modules that actually we'll see backing away from the space station will separate and only the descent module will return to Earth with the crew members inside. So there's not much room for um, for cargo, but the astronauts do uh, manage to bring back a little bit of science and research, in particular the their own science and research, since they are one of the main guinea pigs on board the space station. So uh, that is one of the first things that uh, the teams on the ground will do once the crew is safely off uh, and out of the Soyuz is pick up those um, those science uh, science samples and make sure that they get safely returned. And if you follow Chris Cassidy on social media at astro underscore seal, you can um, see a picture of some of the science that he personally collected earlier today. 29 to 30, docking and internal transfer system power on. And final question for now is from Jason, asking when will the next SpaceX Crew Dragon arrive at the space station? Uh, as I mentioned, that is gonna be bringing up Mike Hopkins Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, and Suichi Noguchi, and it is currently scheduled to launch in November. Uh, we'll be taking a look at that mission and uh, making a final call on the launch date sometime soon. And the time is 02.30.30. Transfer hatches are closed. The indicator is also eliminated. We're just a couple minutes away from undocking now. I issued the command to open the hooks and... Anatoly Infinition, the Soyuz commander there, confirming that he sent the command to undock. That sets the undocking in motion, but will still take two minutes before the undocking actually occurs. And S-13 command is no longer illuminated. Electrical connectors mated. Zero two, Mechanical connection is no longer illuminated at zero two thirty one forty one. And there you see, undocking right on time at 6.32 p.m. Central while the Soyuz and Station are 263 miles above uh, Russia. Expedition 63 crew officially on its way home now. They arrived at the space station on April 9th and have spent 196 days living and working there, greeting the first commercial spacecraft to launch humans into space and completing another link in the almost 20-year-long chain of continuous human presence at the space station. Docking port is clean of any debris. And this view coming from the crosshairs uh, on, uh, from the video 
uh, camera on board the Soyuz itself. Looking at that poise module as it grows further and further away. This view coming from the International Space Station. Short drop out of video uh, as uh, the signal is handed over from one satellite to another, but we should be getting that back in just a moment. Coming up uh, in just a moment at three minutes after do undocking, we'll have that first separation burn. That'll begin moving the, space uh, the Soyuz further out from the space station, getting it to a safe distance. And there's our video back. This again coming from the Soyuz itself, a view of what the crew sees as they back away from the space station. We are standing by for thrust activation. Plus X. And we confirm depot thrusters. There's that first separation burn. So we use jets firing for just eight seconds to ease it further away from the space station, just over a mile per hour. It is no longer eliminated, and we confirm the maneuver, start of the maneuver. Team on the ground reports a good separation burn. So he is MS-16 now moving away from the space station, about uh, 1.2 miles per hour, and coming up, the second separation burn. Five six unintelligible. All right, that's the firing time is fifteen seconds. Uh, burn is fifteen seconds. That second separation burn uh, lasting, as you heard there, 15 seconds. That will speed the spacecraft up by three and a half miles per hour. Still not moving too fast, but certainly will be coming up later in their journey. And we sent the E1 command unintelligible. No. Moscow, how do you copy? You can see the Soyuz moving out there. That second burn uh, puts them a safe distance away from the space station for the ultimate deorbit burn that will drop them back into the Earth's atmosphere at 9 p.m. Put them on a return course for Kazakhstan, landing at 9.55 p.m. Central. A1 command sent. We're 
I am deactivated the docking internal transfer system at 0238. I am activating the head headlight and deactivating Vizier Frechel. I have deactivated the headlights and the translational hand controller is in transport position. Everything continuing to go smoothly as the Soyuz MS-16 backs away with Chris Casti, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Ivan Wagner in tow, setting them on their final section of this uh, journey of their mission, the 196 days in space. 170-171. And then 466. Do we want to deactivate Vizier? Пока не отключаем. Ждем указаний. We're standing by for your recommendations, Moscow. Another view from the International Space Station cameras of the Soyuz getting further and further away. Two vehicles are now about 263 miles above the Pacific Ocean, east of Japan, and just, uh, just about to begin heading southeast on this orbit around the Earth. Включаем телевидение, откуда? Да, Отключаем At 2.41.30, I sent the command to deactivate the TV system and display. Affirmative. All right, and rotational hand controller is in transport position. What's with the calm? Guys, what's with the calm? There is so much interference. Okay, and where are we at? We are moving on to page 47.
Иркута, напоминаю, следующая команда у нас 03-45-00, включение видеокамер GoPro в режим видеозаписи. Unintelligible. Ну и до этого нужно провести подготовку к работе по 48 -й. Still seeing good views of the Soyuz moving further and further away from the space station. These coming from the International Space Station's exterior cameras. Inside that Soyuz MS-16, the Expedition 63 crew now on their way back to Earth for a landing that's scheduled for 9.55 p.m. Central Time today. Again, they undocked uh, at 6.32 p.m. Central. Slowly backing away from the International Space Station now with the uh, aim of getting to a good spot for their deorbit burn that will be taking place at 9 a.m. at 9 p.m. Давайте ближе к времени 03:40, наверное, там. Last again. We're starting working to work for page 48 at 0340. So use MS-16 is now safely backed away from the International Space Station following that 6.32 p.m. Central undocking. And uh, right now the space station itself is maneuvering into its post-undocking attitude. Uh, so at that point, we're going to take a break in our coverage. We are going to be back at 8.30 p.m. Central Time for the Soyuz's 5-minute and 20-second deorbit burn that's scheduled for 9 p.m. Central Time. And from that point, we'll stay with you until the crew has landed and is out of their vehicle. Again, that landing is scheduled for 9.55 p.m. Central Time. So we are hoping that you'll be back with us in just uh, about an hour and 45 minutes for our continuing coverage of the Soyuz MS-16 landing today at 9.55 p.m. Central. We'll see you back at 8.30 p.m. for continuing coverage, and this is Mission Control Houston.